a lot of moments in this game that that stand out. So let's start with the first one, the Dalen Austin roughing the punter. I understand the impression, and this is, again, a microcosm of the entire feeling. You watch, you're frustrated, you're annoyed. It's not actually as bad as you think. So you watch it and go, well, what's he supposed to do? He runs into the guy. The ball wasn't tipped by rule. By rule, this was one of the few good calls from the officials. And by the way, I have no idea what they were looking at on that Terrence Ferguson touchdown. But hey, my prediction came to pass and T-Ferg scored. Yippee. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what, what was going on there. But if the ball is not tipped and the punter has established himself in a position back there, which is a subjective call, but I actually thought they got it right. I thought they got it right. Dalen Austin's got to either touch the ball or not hit the punter them's the rules so i didn't have a problem with that particular call now one of the pass interference calls against tysheem johnson i don't know what we're doing for the guys in the black and white stripes did not impede the progress in a major way felt like a flag that was thrown because tysheem had committed a personal foul earlier and you know they were close in proximity and so it felt like well he committed that flag on the on the play prior so he probably did it again here that's what that one felt like so yeah calls weren't good going both ways what do you know officials aren't very good again so i didn't have huge problem uh, a problem with the dale and austin thing but i <laughs> i tell you what was that drive to go up 29 10 the most hilarious inexplicably great touchdown drive in the history of Oregon football I'm serious that that was some next level who cares let's throw everything against the wall and see what sticks stuff from Dan Lanning and Joe Lorig and company because I mean you run a fake punt to Jordan Birch and that's the least crazy thing that happens you throw a touchdown to a backup offensive lineman Janoris Wilson who's barely played and has never caught a pass before and then you run the two-point conversion. You don't need it. You have no practical need for a two-point conversion. You're already up 27 to 10, but you say, let's work on it. And let's involve Josh Connerly, the left tackle. Oh! Uh, Dan's just a maniac, man. I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else to say. A big man touchdown. Special shout out to my buddy Alex, who's an offensive lineman back in high school. He loves the big fellas, loves when they get love, loves when they score touchdowns. I tell you what, I was grinning ear to ear going, oh my gosh. <laughs> and by the way, that came after the fake punt in which they tried a double reverse flea flicker back to Dylan Gabriel, in which the official right in front of the play didn't throw his flag. And I'm like, what is you looking at, dog? He just body checked him are we playing hockey out here you can't do that while the ball's in the air and then the other official threw the flag so they eventually got it right but that was again one of those things where it just it, those sorts of moments spiraled throughout the game I think to to grow a sense of frustration that was warranted at some level but shouldn't have been as high as it was because Oregon really always had this game in control they they, they did and yeah, they played poorly early. Then they found some explosion in the passing game. Jordan James had the nice catch and run. Noah Whittington had a great game. Uh, he ended the game with, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Got to get this right. 13 carries, 77 yards, and uh, no touchdowns, but had some really good-looking runs. The 28-yard scamper he had was phenomenal. And Jordan James, only seven carries in this one. I, I think they're just keeping him fresh. That, that was that was the indication. I'll talk about that more uh, in in the third segment because I think that happened with a couple of different guys because health is certainly something that I think everybody is monitoring at, at this point in the year. But that, that drive was just sicko behavior. <laughs> it went from 21-10 of like, oh, is this going to be uncomfortable? Is this going to be too? Wait, Jordan Birch, Janoris Wilson, and Josh Connerly were all involved in touchdown or first down moving plays on the same drive? what are we doing <laughs> like it's so great it's so great it's just it's phenomenally good speaking of jordan birch 
That was the Jordan Birch we saw earlier in the year, early in the game. And frankly, it was a bit of relief. That was the moment where I knew, yeah, Oregon's got this. You know, the sloppy offensive play, that can linger. You have a turnover here or there maybe, or they weren't great in every third down situation. I thought Whittington had a good game. I I think Noah Whittington single-handedly costs Oregon a third down conversion. I'd have to go back and watch the play again, but there was a third and one, forget which quarter, but Gabriel's running an RPO and he tried to pull it from Whittington's stomach, which was the right play. And Whittington, I think, just kind of took it from him. And Gabriel had two guys open on the RPO or he maybe could have run for it. And that was a play where I watched and was like, that's not a great sequence there from Whittington. You got to let the quarterback make the read. I know you want the ball, but you, you got to you gotta make a better play there. Again, that's just what I saw on first glance. I don't know if I'll uh, think something else watching it for the second time. But the, the, the Jordan Birch play was so good. I expected more of that where Birch or Mateo or Derek Harmon just bully the Maryland offensive line. Didn't happen a ton. Only two sacks. They did allow just 2.7 yards a carry. I thought there'd be a little more pressure early in the game. And I think as a result, Oregon blitzed a little bit more than they otherwise would have. And Billy Edwards was able to exploit some of those openings. He wasn't always able to exploit those openings, though. He's 22 of 44 passing the football. Like, that's a good day from the secondary when you've got two picks. Justin Jacobs with uh, the, channeling his inner Kiko Alonso there on, on the diving interception. That was great. But Birch coming off the edge. And Brandon Johnson, the heads-up play. I Nothing drives me insane more than a ball being on the ground, not sure if it's a pass or a fumble or whatever, and guys stop playing. There is no, I repeat, no downside to continuing as if it happened. And a Maryland receiver, if you watch, he did stop playing. He thought, oh, no, it was a pass. Because when I watched it live for the first time, I thought it was a pass. And then I watched the replay and went, oh, nope, that's very clearly a fumble. And it caromed beautifully into Brandon Johnson's hands. And he's really fast, went the other way, scored a touchdown. And... I felt like turnovers were always close to happening for Oregon. There were a couple plays batted down by defensive linemen. I think there were four passes defended by defensive linemen in this game, Uh, maybe five. Uh, Actually, I can check on that. Hold on. Wait for it. Uh, Caldwell had two. Birch had two. And Mateo had one. And Mari Washington had one. So six passes got batted down at the line of scrimmage. That's kind of the counter to not having as many sacks as they did a great job getting their hands up in there. I thought there were a couple times where Kobe Savage was going to have an interception, but the ball got batted down at the line of scrimmage. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay. with. I thought Savage played his best game as a duck, bar none. He was making a lot of really, really high impact plays. He'll definitely be one of my individual standouts on, on Monday's show. But, you know, Burt's coming off the edge, forcing the fumble, Johnson getting it. Then the interception by Justin Jacobs, disappointing that Oregon had first and goal inside the, I think they were inside the seven yard line, weren't able to punch it in, might've been inside the five even, and they weren't able, and they had to settle for the field goal there. That ends up being the reason that Oregon didn't cover. But when when your biggest gripe arguably is, well, Oregon didn't cover. Okay. Whoop-de-doo. Who cares, as Oregon's head coach might say. So those are uh, a lot of the moments that, that stood out to me. Let me know your thoughts. If uh, you think there are any big ones that I missed, I'll talk about them on Monday's show.